my husband, he needs surgery really bad and it's super expensive. Luckily, my parents have the money to help me out. So can you imagine how I was feeling when they said, you know what? We're not going to help you out because we're doing this for your sister. Let's say if you're going to be the kind of person who gets to have a baby just because you didn't like the first one, well, let me tell you, you don't deserve any baby in the first place. As simple as that, I mean, it's a thought I would have told my parents over 30 years ago when they had me. They would have skipped the experience and gone straight to my sister. So they would not have to leave a person with an existential and sentimental void like I am now. Sorry if I sound very adolescent, it's just that anger makes me write all this in tears. And all because of a couple of individuals a suck and their role as parenting. My sister has always been the favorite. The number one numero uno. The one who's always got the attention, who was supported in everything. The one if she needed a sheet of paper for a student project, bought her a whole box of paper. While I, well, had to save my allowance to be able to buy a soda pop every now and then at school. There was no support in any way for me, not even when I asked them for a set of paints, which they promised to get me and which surely, if they had given it to me, would have awakened the artist in me. But no, they only made me have books, 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 books. And what they forced me to do is study. Tax law, also known as the most boring career in the world. I warn you that this is a story of the oldest child being displaced by the youngest in every way possible and in a twisted way. I wish for many years that my parents would have another baby so that she would get displaced the middle child treatment, right? But it did not happen. So I kept quiet for the rest of my life and it was particularly difficult during adolescence because of all this rebellious youth and other stereotypes. My parents and I argued quite a bit during that time, but it's because they generated those same discomforts. I remember one time when I got in trouble at school, and they spent almost an entire afternoon talking to the principal about my behavior, this and that, delving to the core of the problem, which happily was lack of attention at home. Thereupon, my parents scolding me apologized as well, and we went home. My treatment that good week went slightly better, which is as far as I can remember. But after the week was over, things went back to normal, and unfortunately for me, my sister was still the center of attention. I was relegated to the background per huge. If I had a little more money, believe me, I would have paid for some psychological therapy sessions. But I didn't. So, like any good person of this century, I bit my tongue and repressed all my feelings until college where I met John. I'd always had the peculiar of dating big, strong, confident guys, but ultimately they ended up the same way, cheating on me and abandoning me and any hint of fidelity they could generate in me. Add to that where I come from and believe me, my head was not in a good place to live. John was different. He was short, skinny, nerdy, and a video game fanatic and allergic to contact sports. Yeah, I sound cruel, but those were his words. At first, he didn't catch my attention, like, at all, and I even disliked him a bit, being that I was the one, you know, of those people who would possibly bully him if I could get him on the street. Or not bullying, really, but just ignore him, generating the same conflict I had at home. But that was until I talked to him. He was tender, sympathetic, kind, gentleman. I still remember our, what, five first dates in detail? And it's because I finally felt like I was being treated the way I deserved to be treated. Because someone was paying attention to me and making me see that I was enough or even too much for him. He used to say that he would never in his life expect someone like me to end up dating someone like him. Because of all the stark differences, right? He was also honest with me and explained about his very difficult condition. He suffers from constant pain, mostly in the back area, and has scoliosis since childhood. This has been a fairly notorious limitation since he was born. And although physically he seems to be fine, he was telling me that at any moment he could require emergency surgery. He's since been rallying in case it does happen. And it was something that I thought was both smart and brave of him. He told me that from job to job, he managed to scrape together at the age of 12 almost 2,000 bucks without ever spending on a popsicle or one of those sodas I craved in school. 
That's why I said this guy has my respect. And, you know, things just happened. However, there was a lot of things involved for which I feel somewhat responsible. You see, when we finished college, which part-time job in a promising future, we decided to take our relationship to the next level. That's why we used some money to be able to go on trips to some cities, so we could enjoy ourselves as a formal couple. This period was quite nice because there were no fights and I could stay away from my parents' roof, so I could receive the attention that I was never given and even denied to me. However, this money I mentioned was part of John's operation money, but he didn't reveal it to me until a few days after our tour was over. Of course, there were some hiccups afterward, mostly from me telling him that he did not have to have done it, as I wasn't worth it, but when he dropped that ring at me and got down on that knee after a normal dinner we had that night, I could not say no to him. How could it be that even when I revealed the engagement to my parents, none of them seemed to pay proper attention? It was something along the lines of, Ah, that's nice. Ah, uh, congratulations, what's the dude's name? Uh, you know, the guy I've been dating for five years. Instead, my sister, who was still in college, was being supported in everything, from student loans to the dorm itself, which my parents were paying for, uh, in spades. Even for a career like hotel management, and by the way, not that I'm going to discredit it or anything like that, but it's amazing the change that they have between my career and hers at the time we chose them. Mostly because it was imposed on me when she said that she wanted to travel the world, and that alone was enough to win over both our parents. Anyways, my sister had the upper hand, and she never missed a chance to rub it in our faces. Of course, she doesn't do it like she used to when we were kids. She was very snooty about her things, and I still remember one Christmas when she got the gift she wanted. But I didn't because I was, quote, too old for Santa. Even though she kept getting the same gifts until two years after she was my age by then. And she started to celebrate precisely the fact that she did get gifts and I didn't. She would rub my face in it, dance and make fun of them. And my parents? Well, she rubbed them in my face, danced and teased me and my parents as well. Well... They were too busy caroling with my drunken uncles in the kitchen. Yes, they have been my life up until then, but I dare say none of it mattered to me. Not of what I just told you have ever gotten bad enough to say off-color things. In itself, I took it for years as bad behavior on part of my parents, but I devalued my situation by saying that many people have gone through a similar or even worse situation. But now I see that this is not so. And it is then that I tell the details of what makes my story particularly horrible. Years ago, my parents went through a rather delicate economic situation because of all the, you know, sometimes somewhat exaggerated excessive spending by my sister. <laughs> they ended up almost completely in debt to the neighbor's dog. And that's when John and I came along. I know what they'll say, why help your parents when all they have given you is a life full of neglect? But understand that I have a little chicken heart, and they are my parents. Besides, all their friends when I talked to them would just tell me to help them because they felt so bad asking me for money when they were aware of my situation with them. In that sense, I thought at some point they were going to apologize for the years and terrible parenting that they gave me. But you know what? Nothing of that sort. So, I gave them some money and they were able to get their self completely out of debt. But beyond that, it was a thank you, darling. That felt more like it was my blood obligation to support them and look out for them. That felt very bad to me, but now I feel worse about another situation. As I told you, John spent some of the money from his emergency surgeries on our trip and our wedding. And although we managed to recover some of it, in the end, it wasn't enough to make ends meet. I asked my parents to help me because I knew from that ugly experience that they've been saving up. I told them, no, no, I begged them, that it was for my husband, the person I loved the most, but they made a thousand and one excuses until I finally got discouraged and started asking for loans like crazy. The surgery was one of the most expensive things since it was bone marrow transplant, which is only surpassed by emergency lung or heart transplants. You don't know how helpless I was when I woke up one day, uh, John next to me in bed crying, 
saying he couldn't move, much less get up. I was in panic and despair and seeing my parents' unconcerned faces when I would ask for help and they would say, I'm sorry, honey, we don't have it, or we're saving up for something else. It was too much for me to take. I wanted to disengage from them and disappear from the planet, and I had to borrow heavily from friends and even campaign on the internet to do it. In the end, we reached the goal and the operation could be done. It was quite a delicate process, but seeing the satisfaction on John's face, the man who only cared about giving me the life I didn't think I deserved, was too much for my heart. My parents and, of course, sister were there during rehab, and while John kept telling me to change my face, the truth is, I wasn't the most exciting person in the room when they came here, let alone when I found out what happened. That is the real reason why they couldn't help. As it turns out, there was something more important after all. To buy my sister a damn house! Two stories, four bedrooms, and a modest backyard, and of course two bathrooms equipped and with the possibility of a basement. Do you know what my wedding present was? A kitchen mixer. And by the way, I already have a better one. I think it was the biggest slap of reality I've ever had in my life. And when I found out a month after John's surgery, he had to hide the phone and car keys from me because I was so angry with them. I would have told my parents anything morally wrong, from wishing them dead to wishing I've never been their daughter. And I even had a huge upset stomach as a result of it. I mean... They don't have money for their son-in-law, but they do have money to give a super fancy house to their youngest daughter. Guys, you'll excuse me, but this goes beyond jealousy. This is almost grounds for a moral lawsuit. I'll speak to you straight and give you round numbers. John's surgery, $140,000. And the house they gave my sister is valued at almost $200,000. A few things could have happened. Either they could have given her an apartment or something noticeably more comfortable, or they could have loaned us the money and then we could have paid them back. They haven't written to me, and neither has my sister. The most surreal part of the whole thing is that they gave that house to the daughter to graduate two years after she was supposed to finish her degree. Because my sister was enough of an idiot to repeat two whole years at university. And guys... That is not cheap. I'll admit those were the economic problems they faced. My sister's imbecility. And now they reward her with that. It's super unfair. Update number one. I'm sorry, guys. I got carried away with my previous post. And I don't know. I felt that if I kept writing, I would get to the part where I would start saying obscenities. Although many like it. I have to remain serene because I know I'm not that. Anyways, I got upset too because they didn't have a valid excuse for not helping. Giving my sister a house was perhaps the biggest slap in the face I've ever gotten in life. John remains too calm, although I've slowly tried to bring him to the point where this is me. Of course, he didn't have to go through the same thing I did because he still had more considerate family. He was an only child, but he grew up with several cousins, and he tells me that it wasn't a problem. Everyone treated everyone the same, always with respect and affection in between, and I can only envy him tremendously. Anyways, I've not spoken to my parents since, but I know uh, how I feel, and they know it. My sister keeps bragging about her new house online, even though my husband was on the verge of death just a few weeks ago. It's perhaps a new definition for the word selfish in itself. It was nothing necessary for her, but now she had a clear path for any drone to approach her like flies to honey. Ah, a pretty girl, single, recently graduated, and a tremendous house? By God, what she's going to do is feast on men in her home. For that's another aspect of her that she's never known how to say no to a man. I could spend a lifetime saying all the things that I detest and that are objectively wrong with my sister, but I feel that words would not be enough. Anyways, I came here to vent and to let you see that no matter how selfish you think your parents are, you will know that someone, uh, somewhere in the world, there's a girl with even worse parents. 
I think I mentioned it, but it killed me to see John on the surgery table with the mask and the blank stare, and I felt like I was going to say goodbye forever to the person who was loved and supported me in the most in my whole life. So, it's very delicate in the state in which it's in. Because it is such an immense rage that it makes the desire for hatred well up on me again. Previously, I've commented on how I used to not get angry with them for the simple fact of being my parents, but I think they broke that privilege. Because there's times when even your family have to say no to. Those were some bitter conversations I remember having in high school with my guidance counselors. And they would say the typical, You should love your parents no matter what because they gave you life. And sacrifice part of theirs to give you a comfortable upbringing. And while I never lacked food on the table, okay, maybe that's true, I never lacked it. There are times when even that doesn't matter if the rest of your upbringing is going to be absolutely horrible. Updates number two. It's uh, bad to laugh at other people's frustrations and misfortunes, but on this occasion, I would be surprised not to. As I found out, no, no, no. You know what? I'll explain it. My parents texted me and they took advantage of the fact that I was very busy. They knew that I wasn't going to pay 100% attention to them, and from what I gleaned from the conversation, I learned that my parents did not buy the house outright, but offered a down payment to secure the house at about 50%, with my sister proposing to pay part of the loan that they made in a certain amount of time. <laughs> in other words, it was going to be a joint purchase, but she needed to come up with a 50% off my parents' loan. That made me feel kind of good. I mean, just a little. Not that much because it made me believe that at least my sister was able to pitch in so she could have her own house. Although that doesn't take away from how selfish they were with us at the time. I also understand why in part they could not help us. And it's because they didn't have the money. I'm not going to put so many alibis for what they did because they didn't even engage in explaining their situation to us. They just went full-on pandering to my sister and everything she wanted. But guys, that is not the craziest part of it. I forgot to mention something. But it's been about three months since my last update, which was when my sister got the house. And my sister has not paid her share of the home at all. She had a really good job, but ended up spending what she had on a fancy new car just to match her fancy new house. Stupid, I know. But what can you expect from her? I'm not surprised by somehow my parents are, who are just starting to see her for who she is, a spoiled brat who doesn't know how to manage her own life. Anyways, the thing is, they contacted me because it turns out that the lost daughter they always had on the side is living a pretty comfortable life. After all, a certain me and a certain husband in the last few months started a company that took off absolutely exorbitantly from one moment to the next. We invested in one of the foreign clients' orders and we hit the jackpot with it. That and the fact that we decided to bet on some emerging businesses from some friends and they skyrocketed like you don't have an idea. What's more, we went from trying to find money for operations to paying back loans with interest. And that's another update I was going to share with you. John and I have improved in our lives lately. It's funny about all that because I even got to thinking that it was part of the divine heavenly karma that caused us to have so many ugly moments before we could have our resurgence. Just to give you an idea. With just my part of the salary alone, it was enough to get out of debt. And we were saving to be able to buy a new car. But given the circumstances, we want to take a risk and go for a home. Of course... We'll be keeping the car we have for a long time, but we prefer the house because, depending on the place, it would be even more efficient for transportation. Currently, I'd say the only negative aspect of the routine is to take the bus from time to time as not to put too much strain on the car. But it's all for the sake of saving money. We even set a goal of having our first child as soon as we had three things. A house, a car, and of course, a trip to Europe. After that, welcome pregnancy baby belly. Gosh, I do get sidetracked from the story. Anyways, my parents called me to ask me for money. That's right, they got to the point where, with their hands well and truly washed, they ended up coming to me so they could help pay for my sister's house. 
Of course, I did not give them an immediate answer, as I told them I'm busy, and well, I was in the middle of a very important meeting, and I was answering them all the time, yes, yes, no, whatever, no, yes. Then it's what, then I read the issue, and it dawned upon me. So I was able to secretly laugh at their situation, but no, that's not how things work. It's not like you could have offended me or denied your help in the past and then come to me in the most normal way asking for help. No, gentlemen, that's not how life works. And if you think there's nothing wrong with that, I recommend you stop reading from now on because you may not like what's coming. I haven't spoken to my sister at all times, but I know my parents haven't scolded her properly and that gets on my nerves. If so, her behavior will simply be worse, and it'll be all her fault. Update number three. <laughs> I did something wrong. Or good, not bad, but fair, I guess. Depends on the point of view you take, but to tell you a little more, let's go back to a month when my parents had the nerve to ask me to finish paying for my sister's house. After she spent her money on a new car. I refused at their faces flat out, and... It was going to be my revenge for everything that they've done to me all my life, but something happened, and the gears of a diabolical plan, I thought, began to turn. First, I had to talk to them again sometime later, calling a small family meeting where I exposed everything, and I mean everything! John wanted to be with me on the occasion, but he was at work, busy with a super important meeting, and I arrived at my sister's house. The time, oh well, first time I had seen it from the inside since all I had seen were pictures online. My parents were there, and they were all half crestfallen because they knew that they had been very hypocritical with me. When I was about to start talking, my sister all at once jumped up and said, Look, 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 we know what you're going to say, that we're terrible people and all that. Can we skip it? I just feel like it's over the top. Well, I have to thank her for saying this because then I was able to go on to the next part much easier. I start saying that even so, they should understand that it was all wrong and that they would now be paying for the broken dishes, or rather they would not have to, since I took out a piece of paper and put it on the table. Oh, it was nothing, just a small document that said John and I were the owners of the property we were talking about. I had to explain it to them as they didn't quite understand. When I told them that thanks to the contacts with the seller who sold them the house, I was able to do something. Apparently, she was well aware of the situation, and I don't know about how for more than three months the house payment was still due, when at least half the down payment had been promised, and when she realized that my sister had a new car and the purchase had not been finalized, she was able to take legal action. Of course, that was before I arrived, coincidentally. The bank put both the house and my sister's car up for auction. Since she wasn't able to afford them, something my sister was very well of and did not tell my parents, the seller showed me pictures of the place and I told her that even though she was my sister, I had not gone to visit her. The truth is that the place was very nice. So, I offered her up 75% of the total payments in advance with the possibility of paying the rest next month, because that was why, you know, she would trust that the same thing that happened to my other side of the family would not happen again. And I have news for you, today is the end of that month, so officially the house and the car is ours! That's right, you know what they call that? Two birds, one stone. At first, my sister gets very upset and refused to take her things out of there, as she said that this was her new home. But I told her in absolute the most coldest voice in the world that the contract on the table said otherwise, and that she better leave before I take legal action. I never felt better in my life. And here we are, in a new house with a new car, but we're thinking of selling this car and having two more family focuses. After all, we're already considering going further with this family project. Regarding my family situation, well, since my sister ended up moving in with my parents and sold her car to get out of various expenses, neither of them seemed to apologize to me for everything. In fact, I think it's quite the opposite. And my sister hates my guts for everything that happened. I know, I know, it wasn't right, but 
You pay for things one way or the other, and I'm just thrilled about our new home! Although we had it deep cleaned very well, because the previous tenants, let's say, were not all that neat. <laughs> My mom tried to apologize via video call, but then started asking me for money and some consideration to which I told her the whole situation was earned by them for the kind of people that they were. If they loved my sister so much, then keep supporting her for surely they can get other loans so they can, you know, get their next house. Meanwhile, John and I are still in our new abode, decorating and able to ride our bikes to work, but we had better not get used to it, as we are soon going to have a new trunk that will allow us to get in and out and explore the world much better. Oddly enough, I'm thinking of a cheaper car than the other one my sister had, but much more practical. Well, that's always been me, the one who sees much further ahead. Maybe my family would have understood if they paid more attention to me. Anyways, sorry. <laughs> I mean, this has to be one of the best revenge stories that we've read in quite some time, because I think OP built it up perfectly and delivered to her parents, to her sister, and basically, it was the revenge dish served cold. I want to know your thoughts about buying the house and the vehicle, and just taking over the payments and kicking your sister to the curb after everything that she did. Luckily, OP's husband was still able to get the surgery, but guys, it could have been a lot worse. I want to know your opinions. Do you guys agree that uh, OP was saying how her parents are basically obligated to help her husband, and if they don't want to, then she's never going to help them again? I agree in the fact that, yeah, if your family can help you and they don't, and then they come later on to beg you for help, you have every right to say no. Let me know your thoughts on that, guys. My name's Mr. Redito, and I narrate stories like this every day. So if you want to be a part of these day-to-day -day stories full of drama, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. And do remember, it's cool to be kind. Peace.